Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this sort of misty reflections on a lake scene. Um, I'm not using a photograph for this. I'm just playing around and experimenting. I'm trying to keep things simple and just seeing if I can get some nice, easy reflections without sort of having to put too much work into it, just keeping it really simple. So I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton. Um, it's 11 inches by 15 inches. Um, it's 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board is at an angle of 45 degrees. So gravity will help with the flow of the paint downwards and hopefully help with my reflections. Now, I haven't wet my paper first, but what I'm doing is covering it with a very light raw sienna wash all over. So a flat wash of raw sienna applied with my large um, synthetic mop brush. It's um, an Escoda Ultimo mop brush and it's a size 18. And now I'm using um, two colours, sepia and Payne's Grey, pulling them across um, the bottom third for a bit of shadow in the water of the lake. Now this will turn my flat raw sienna wash into a graduated wash. Um, and now I'm using my um, Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler brush, which is a one and a half inch flat brush. Um, again, synthetic. I'm using that with the same colors to pull up some distant trees. These should fade out a lot lighter than they are at the moment. And I'm gonna pull down some reflections into the lake using the brush and just sort of mirroring the shape of those trees. Um, as I said, my board is at 45 degrees, so gravity should help um, with the flow of the paint. It should sort of tend downwards and diffuse downwards because of the slope. So that's my distant tree line. Just going to sort of pull a bit of paint down into the damp lake area. Again, just to give me that very gentle reflection. I'm not being too sort of fiddly and fussy because I have to be quite quick with this to make sure that everything diffuses nicely. Now I've gone into my sepia and Payne's grey and picked up really dark, rich paint. Um, for these this closer group of trees that I'm going to put over on this side, um, which is sort of sticking out of a bank uh, very close to us. So I'm putting in really rough shapes, trying not to be too sort of precious about the shapes of the trees or the shapes of the bank, just keeping sort of fairly open structure to this with the brushwork, dotting and dashing around, so that I've got that look of sort of looser canopies around the tops of the trees and sort of denser foliage and tree trunks and branches and things around the base, but still with a little bit of light through. And then just pulling the brush straight down with this really nice rich paint, uh, straight down vertically below the trees, um, coming over the tape and um, then straightening up that bank, keeping that nice and horizontal so that, that bank is flat. And this is a three quarter inch flat brush. I just decided to try and sort of take out um, a water line, just a very faint one. It should fade back a little bit. It's looking a bit bright at the moment. Um, in fact, I think I prefer it without, but I'm not going to fiddle around. Um, you know, if you sort of, when you experiment, if you make a decision and do something, then kind of commit to it and leave it. Because if I go back and try and change that now, then I'm in danger of um, messing up the clarity, if you see what I mean, getting some funny marks. So if you do something you're not so keen on, just move on from it because it's not that important. After all, all we're doing now is sort of experimenting, playing and learning. And one thing I learned from that is that I preferred the painting the way it was before I put the waterline in. 
Now this is my palette knife. I'm using it to etch through this really rich paint and it's giving me some trunks um, in the darker paint. It's sort of etching through to the white of the paper or at least to the raw sienna colour uh, that I put down first for the wash. And then as I pull it up towards my canopies, it's moving a bit of paint up. And so the palette knife is actually painting in a few branches for me. And now using my Escoda Perla synthetic round brush, it's a size 14, um, I'm just dotting in a few extra canopy shapes, putting in a bit of dry brush um, so it sort of looks like those groups of small twigs at the ends of the branches and lots of sort of loose foliage. Again, bringing down reflections with those vertical brush strokes, trying to sort of imitate um, the shape above me, but without getting too bogged down with detail. So that's the first wash finished. The lake looks really beautiful. The washes are clean and clear, and it looks like a really sort of still early morning sort of misty morning so I'm going to leave it to dry completely and then come back and finish it off. If you're tempted to sort of fiddle and fuss around with the water and the tree a bit more it's best not to at this stage when it's simple and clean like this leave it. So it's dried back really nicely um, I avoided any fiddling so the wash in the water of the still lake is really um, clean and very fresh looking so all I need is a little bit of detail here and this is a number one rigger um, and I'm going to use the rigger brush or lining brush just to put in a few branches here and there and then use the rigger again to reflect those branches in the water. I'm just putting a couple in and just that gives that little tiny bit of convincing reflection. Um, it just sort of cements that illusion without overdoing it. And then up and a few up to the sort of higher parts of the tree canopies, just linking a few of those sort of splodgy paint marks with some branches, some finer branches at the top. Again, just to kind of give that illusion or suggestion of this being a group of trees. With loose painting, we're not painting detail, we're painting marks um, very loosely uh, with as few brush strokes as we can, just to create this sort of illusion of detail. And I think this is, this is enough for this little experiment. For me, the main thing was to get the water really clean and still um, and to get those sort of subtle reflections. And I think it's worked quite nicely with this limited palette of just three colours. And so that was just raw sienna for the background wash and then sepia and Payne's grey for the rest of the, the trees, the reflections and the shadow across the water. So I've removed the tape um, and with a clean white border, it gives us a chance to look at it with fresh eyes. And I think it's a really nice scene. I think it could be painted similarly with any combination of colours which would give a different atmosphere or ambience to the scene. But I think the main thing to remember with this process is to create that, that flat wash uh, first with the raw sienna or your base colour, um, darken it up with a colour across the bottom for the shadows so that you then um, turn it into a graduated wash. Add your horizon line with your distant trees, keeping it nice and pale, and then use much stronger paint for the trees in the foreground, but still leaving some gaps so you can see through the trees. And that is a really useful thing to help with that illusion. And lastly, as you paint the trees, just pull down simple brush strokes below that with your border to slope of about 45 degrees, maybe 30 degrees, gravity will help to draw the paint and the water down and your reflections should work really nicely without you having to sort of try too hard. Of course, with anything, um, it takes some practice. Remember, I've been painting for um, over five years now and I've had time to build up experience through trial and error. And um, this was my second go at this scene today. The first one didn't work out very well. So I decided just to go in straight away and 
paint it again and I think that's often the best way to to sort of approach this kind of scene especially if you're learning is expect it not to work out the first time but use that as a sort of fact finding mission and then when you go in the second or the third time you'll find that you will be able to paint more freely in a more relaxed way because you will have had some experience of the process and you'll know what to do and what to avoid. So I hope that was helpful to see this process and that you can sort of transfer it into your own paintings and your own ideas. Um, so please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.